Hello, I'm Jeff Power, Senior Writer with Real-Time Fantasy Sports. Welcome to another edition of the Real-Time Fantasy Sports Show. I'm very excited today. I'm joined by the winners of the Fantasy Championship this year, Ross Peters and Donovan May. They co-own the team that won it all. They took home $500,000 for the win. We're really excited to talk to them about the big win. We'll talk about their draft, their strategy during the season, any close calls they had, anything uh, any big pickups they had as well. So we are really excited to talk to both of them, and I want to thank them for joining me today. So without further ado, let's bring up Donovan and Ross. Ross, Donovan, thanks so much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, my first question is, has it sunk in yet? Um, I mean, either of you guys can go first, but, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Has, has it sunk in? Uh, I'll hop in, D. Uh, I s- I'm I'm about to wire transfer Donovan his half, so it's it, it sunk <laughs> in when the when it all oh, hit my bank yeah. account. Let's just put it that way. It uh, probably feel more real, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but D, yeah. D's a little bit delayed in terms of my gratification, but um, yeah, we're we're doing the whole banking transfer tax stuff, all the fun stuff that comes with it. But yeah. uh, it took a while. It, it was it was pretty surreal uh but yeah mm-hmm. here we are right it still doesn't I mean, feel what real about, honestly what about the reaction from family and friends anything anything there you can share <laughs> i'll uh, i'll take that so you know new year's eve was the final game and so yep. um i had a small gathering over here and and it was uh it's one of those things where you kind of let the cat out of the bag right you let everybody know hey I, and they nobody it was one of those like unbelievable things like are you kidding me and so you're sitting here trying to enjoy new year's and you keep checking the green bay minnesota score every five minutes it was kind of nerve-wracking um but yeah it was it was a pretty awesome experience having people over here because they all wanted me to win right i mean so yeah yeah for sure same situation for me um it was just Watching that clock in the the Minnesota Green Bay game when it came down to the nitty gritty there, uh, <laughs> you know, going into the Kansas City game, we had Pacheco left, and you know we knew that we had a great shot at it, but you never know with Pacheco. But uh, the man came through strongly yeah. at the end of the season, and uh, we needed I'll it. Gi- I'll give D the credit for Pacheco. That was uh, yeah, I, I didn't need much of a fight, but that was one that uh, he raised his hand on and really wanted to go after, and so I'm glad we got yeah. him. Yeah, I'll bring up the standings here real quick for the playoffs. I mean, it wasn't super close. I mean, sometimes this comes down to a point or two. You guys end up winning by about, I guess, 18 or so points. So you weren't sweating it too bad there, but you definitely had to have a huge last week to win it all. But luckily for you guys, it wasn't super, super close there at the end. (laughs) Right. Yeah. But, I mean, it was still brutal because that that first half of that Green Bay game uh, (laughs) – Was it Reed that had like 30 points at halftime? I mean, it was, you know, you start scrolling down and seeing who's got him. I mean, it was, I wasn't, I didn't really relax until there was about five minutes left in the game, to be honest with you. Okay. So let's talk. Wrong end of it, you know? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. There's always crazy stuff that happens in fantasy. So let's talk about the beginning. Uh, So you guys draft your team was right before the start of the season, pretty much. But after the draft, did you guys feel good about your team? Were you like, hey, we killed it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna win this thing. I mean, what what, what were you guys' thoughts after the draft? Go ahead. Bro. I'll, I'll take it real quick. The uh, I was pumped in the draft. I kept saying this is an exotic team. I kept mm-hmm. using the word exotic. Yeah. Was, I, I can't <laughs> believe we got some of the the early round players that we did. I mean, we obviously took a big risk with uh, with Gibbs as our second round pick. It was somebody I was uh, really uh, convicted with. Uh, I, I liked him over Bijan. I just mm-hmm. I felt like that there was going to be an opportunity there. Yeah, he, uh, did. he did. And then we, uh, you know, Brees Hall fell in our lap. Candidly, you know, I think we were going back and forth between Etienne and Brees Hall, um, and Etienne got selected, so we ended up with Brees, which wasn't bad at all. And yeah, we decided to go all in on Josh Allen at the beginning. Um, and so, you know, that was really our anchor. And then I, I think there was a slight debate on our first pick, uh, yeah, between Tyreek Hill and possibly going, uh, the Eckler route. Um, and I just, I don't know. I'm just, haven't been, plan. <laughs> haven't been too, uh, too thrilled with Eckler over the last few years. And I knew it would be a gamble, you know, possibly mm-hmm. not going running back, but 
wanted to get that anchored wide receiver um, because I knew that we were going to try to go get Gibbs and and maybe, you know, pair that up with either an Etienne or a Brees Hall. And so Mm -hmm. it luckily worked out. I was pumped. Donovan uh, kept saying how exotic our team was. It's just the term I used. And then, you know, the the cherry on top, though, I want to point out is we, we get the draft board and, and, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, you always think, you know, oh, this team is cool for now, you know, but you never know how the season plays out. And flash forward to week three and we ended up at 0 and 3 to start the season. Yeah. Oh, and wow. I'm texting Donovan going like, what the heck did we do? Or are we just, are we losing our touch here? I mean, I, I thought we had a great team and yeah. Uh, I felt like we lost a few by nail biters, but mm-hmm. lo and behold, uh, we we never lost after that and never oh. looked back. And we, we made some timely pickups and we're, mm-hmm. we're very judicious with our fab. And so I think oh, there yeah. were a lot of several different factors throughout the year that we tag teamed on. And mm-hmm. I know I'm talking maybe still in your thunder, D, but no, you saying having, it right. having the co-owner it is crucial. I mean, we both run our own sort of type of businesses and we're very engaged in our families and having that extra person when it comes around with weekly pickups and transactions and fabs and just not forgetting to take people out of lineups, frankly, it's just like, you need that check and balance in your life. And, you know, we've done well over the last few seasons having that chemistry together. Mm -hmm. For sure. I got to ask you guys guys about a couple of your picks. First one, Josh Allen. So was this a, a thought going into the draft, you want to get one of these elite QBs with how it went down last year with those guys producing so big. Is it something you normally do? Uh, I want to get your thoughts on Josh Allen. The third that one. Um, so he and I both, usually we, we have about two or three quarterbacks that we say, hey, if this guy's sitting here in the third, we'll do it. Otherwise, we'll wait. Um, and I'm not opposed to waiting until ninth, tenth round if possible. Um, but there was a couple of names that if they were there, we weren't even going to hesitate. And when it came up our turn, I was like, hey, Alan, I mean, he's like, <laughs> Ross said, hey, if these guys are going to give us Alan in the third round, do it. And we just – it wasn't even a debate. That was probably the easiest pick we made the whole draft, really. It's yeah, I'll expand me- on that, Jeff, yeah, real quick. I just – I feel like the rushing – aspect of the quarterbacks huge uh, you know yeah, the yeah. other guys with the unknowns that have high upside you can target later in the draft but some of the proven runners out there I, I just feel like they're worth that that higher round pick and you can anchor your team around it and as you saw he's um really carried us throughout the season on on some times that we had some variances with other positions also the thing i like about alan is the guy never misses a game I mean, the guy's always healthy, you know? I mean, and, and, like, I like a guy like Burrow, you know, but he's been hurt. I mean, there's just so many guys that get injured, and that guy's just – I mean, he's always there. It's interesting to me when I look at your draft, though. They always say your draft's kind of made in the middle rounds. You took Gabriel Davis, Kadarius Tony, and Maul Williams in seven, eight, nine. Those are pretty much all misses. And yeah. you guys still managed to – you know, win it all, which is uh, impressive to me. I think I think the difference is you made up for it in the later rounds. You had some great picks with Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz, and you can't see it on here because it cuts off. But round 17, you guys picked Kyron Williams. So those late-round picks were huge for you. I mean, Kyron Williams in round 17, he was an undrafted free agent in many leagues. What made you guys take him in round 17? I can take that. Um, mm-hmm. I got to give my man – a shout out. Uh, I'm sure you know who he is, Jeff. I, Donovan, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but I, I'm big into elite sports. Jeff Mann's uh, candidly not a not a subscriber. Used to hate the guy. Thought he was a blowhard. Started following him a few years ago. A lot of his stuff hits. Uh, he, I can give him credit for the Darius Tony pick, too. Um, he gives a lot of good dart throws. Um, and Kyron just kind of leap, leapt out at me because he was just, just hyping them up and he knows these guys, you know, he actually watches the games, watches the players, doesn't just watch the analytics. I knew, we knew that acres was on his way out, out of favor. At least I felt like that after last season, it just didn't end well. And I just felt like if you could get that old, um, you know, style that the LA, the Rams used to kind of implore with, um, uh, why is he 
who was their Haas running back a few years ago? I don't know why I'm going blank now, but uh, about Gurley? yeah, Gurley, just kind of having the Gurley, Gurley yeah. aspect of it. Um, and you know, it hit, you know, I they don't all hit like the mm. Jamal Williams and the Kadarius Tonys, but Jamal was me. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. Hey, he was the leading uh, uh, scoring uh, running back last year, so yeah. you never knew what you were going to get. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you take the good with the bad, right? And then mm-hmm. going back to Tank Dell and Dalton Schultz, I mean, you can see my hat that I'm wearing. So yeah. I don't know if you have inside <laughs> information or not, but if you can actually watch some of these guys play the game instead mm-hmm. of just reading the box scores, I think it That's tells the a difference. Bit of the story. Yep. I took Tank, Tank Dell and probably – 75% of my league. So I was really yeah. happy with the pick. And Nico so Collins, hair, I took yeah. him a lot. I figured someone someone had to be the number one receiver there and definitely a lot of upside mm-hmm. with them. Maybe with playing behind, which they didn't a lot because they were really good. But either way, uh, I just thought they were really good late round picks uh, for their upside. And I also wanted to ask you guys about when you drafted. So there are all different types of thoughts with this. I, I think it was last year the team that won it all drafted before the NFL draft even took place. So That's you're taking crazy. some risk, but you can also get some great deals. So you guys drafted a couple of weeks before the start of the season. Is this something you normally do? Is that what you're most comfortable mm-hmm. with? I just wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, um, it's every year because we we play in the same two other leagues that they've been there over 20 years. And that draft always falls on the weekend before Labor Day. And so he and I have our own franchises in those, those leagues, so we don't talk any shop bef- you know, before that. So I do my team and those two, and he does his, and they always fall on that weekend. So really we can't draft this league because we're p- teammates. We can't do this league until after those drafts because we don't want to give each other information because I want to beat him you know, in that league. So <laughs> it's really just a matter of that's the only – that's just the way it works out. But I'll say this, I mean – you can say, well, you draft later and you avoid some of those injuries, but the guys get hurt in week one. I mean, you can't really – the injury bug either happens or it doesn't, you know? Yep, very true. So uh, let me talk about the in, the end season now. So the draft takes place. Uh, you're ready to go. Season starts. You start at 0-3 like you mentioned. But obviously a big part of – winning at all is managing your fab and your in-season pickups. So let's talk about that. Were there any big pickups for you guys throughout the year? You know it. You can say it. I thought so. Uh, you know, when Njoku burned himself, literally, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm the kind of owner that is one man's trash is another man's yeah. treasure. If, if you're going to drop a, a highly drafted player, yeah. I'm going to vulture that person. Mm-hmm. That's what we kind of hold our fab out for. It's yep. what my strategy's always been. And I think it was maybe week nine or so. We no. Just, we, and Joe, we, we, week five. five. Okay, there you go. Even I better. Up up last night. night. <laughs> I was curious. I mean, he took the place of Kadarius Tony for us, really, in that mm-hmm. roster spot. We just – Kadarius wasn't working out. We eventually mm-hmm. cut him and – if if you if, if there's quality players on on the board, I'm gonna throw some cash at them. I'm yeah. I'm not a big spec fab guy. I just feel like you can get burned that way. And mm-hmm. playing in these 12 team leagues over the years, there's a lot of people that like to go all in early. And yeah. you know you'll get the Nakua's every now and then, but that's few yeah. and far between. But I think Ninjoku was huge for us. Pat Fryer moved yeah. was somebody we drafted and ended up getting hurt and. We were just scrambling, streaming mm-hmm. tight ends and, and hoping Dalton Schultz didn't get hurt. And yeah. we got in Joku and I mean it was a godsend, obviously. Yeah. And then, you know, one of the one of the other I, I think the most crucial pickup though mm-hmm. is we preserved our fab budget throughout the yeah. entire year. And at the very end of the season, uh, Pacheco actually got hurt and we were able to snag CEH and we used him in that game mm-hmm. where he actually scored a decent amount of points and yeah. He was the bridge to getting Pacheco back. I don't think if, yeah. if we weren't able to make that pickup, we're not mm-hmm. winning the whole thing. No. No, because we would have lost the first game of the playoffs. I think, really, yeah. we started even that game. And, and because our backups were just like everybody else, you're thin, you know. I mean, I think we had a spot start Curtis Samuel or something. Right. And he had a good game, you know. But, you, you, you know, you don't want to be starting him 15 times, right? But the Clyde so Edwards, I, Hilaire was a good one. 
Yeah, I brought up your guys' roster here so everybody can see it. And it's actually not too different than what you drafted. There's a few differences. Uh, one thing I did notice, your defense is uh, mm-hmm. Houston here. Do you stream them during the year? Is that one of your strategies? Kickers, defense, is that how you handle them? It's, it's always a question I ask people as well. Yeah, we do. Um, I'm a little bit more old school. I kind of like if I, if I get someone I really like, I like to hang on to them. But it seems like once that bye week hits and we switch, then from then on we just start streaming them. And um, having the Texans was, man, I mean, the the second to last game they got 10, and then in that final game they got 17. Um, so, the you know. Strip sack fumble that they ran mm-hmm. in was – I didn't think we were going to pull it off. I honestly didn't. Mm-hmm. We're watching the game that, that week, and they have the strip, yeah. strip sack fumble. Uh, and that's, when, that's when my energy level rose. I was like, we got a chance now because, you know, defense special teams, yeah, love them or hate them. There's a big debate about that. But I mean, if you can, if you can hit on your D D it's going to, mm-hmm. those are the, those are the teams that are going to win. That's just the X factor. It makes up for like Gibbs having five points. Like right. when you get 17 from your Texans, you know, I think yeah. our kicker even just went, Mm-hmm. Ape shit too. Yeah, like, we had a talk kicker, points, right? you know? Yeah, so, we picked him up late, know. and when he kept putting in points, I'm like, I really don't want to cut this guy, man. <laughs> like the Dolphins are scoring, <laughs> you know. So I, even though we we both kind of joke that we don't like kickers, but if we get a good one, we appreciate it. You guys kind of just touched on us a second ago, though. But was there any point of the season that you felt, hey? we got a chance to win this all. I mean, after the regular season, you guys were 84th in the standings. I looked it up. So uh, you were down there a little bit. But even before then, did you think your team was good enough to make a run? What What were your guys' thoughts? I I mean, it's one of those things. There's, was there 6,600 people, something like that? Yeah. That this thing. So, you, you know, I've been playing fantasy football since I was 9 or 10 years old. And – Playing it this long, there's so many bad beats. When you have that many people, there's so many people under you. You just don't really – I mean, you, something's going to happen. and You feel like somebody's going to overtake you. So, for me personally, no, I didn't really I – I thought we had a good season just being in the top 100. I thought it was pretty cool. You know? I was excited to win our 12-team league after an 0-3 mm-hmm. start, get to the dance. I mean, yeah. that's our goal every year when we do this tournament yeah. is just to get to the dance and see where the chips fall. But – once we got on that roll after week one, it, it started getting exciting. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, week two, it was like, damn, yeah. we might have a chance at this. So, because last year we got second, and we've, we've, I think we've played five years. I think this is our fifth year to, to team up. And um, so, yeah, like after coming back and getting second, I really wanted to win just to get that notch, you know. I didn't realize you guys finished second last year. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. In, our second, in our 12 team, in our not 12 the oh. Team. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, last year, I do think we were in the top 200 because I remember right. thinking, what? like, yeah. at the end of the year, going, "Hey, man, like, we did pretty decent." But no, we finished second in our 12 man. So when we came okay, back this okay. year, we wanted to win it. You know. Yeah, for sure. So when the playoffs hit, I wanted to ask you about if there's any tough decisions you had to make, lineup decisions during the playoffs. You know, coin flip ones that ended up being in your favor. Anything uh, a big move was made that helped you? Well, picking up Edwards Hilaire, and then I feel like um, Gabe Davis, man. I mean, the guy drops a zero, in a, you know, and then so yeah. then the next week it's like, I can't have a zero. And I think that's when we put in Curtis for that game, and Curtis yeah. had a touchdown. He had like 15, 16 points. So. Tons of targets, tons of points. I mean, yeah. he, was, he's, he was reliable all year, but Gabe Davis was kind of our default first man off the bench, mm-hmm. so to speak, when our starters weren't able to go um but we were lucky we didn't have a lot of injuries uh i mean it was pretty much no brainer throughout the entire process yeah and the only time we had to really think about it is if do we really want to play gabe davis this week and you know some weeks we did and i think he paid off once or twice but you know he was a dud for the most part but mm-hmm. he is so tempting to play. he's so tempting to play because of his high ceiling it's it's tough. And you have Josh Allen. So it's like, yeah. man, if he has a good Double game, out, you know. He can throw out the whole length of the football field and Gabe can run it. <laughs> so, yeah, you yeah, never know. For sure. So that last week of the fantasy playoffs, you topped 200 points, which is a crazy number. 204 points you scored uh, to help you win it all. And you did this 
with Jameer Gibbs scoring 5.3 fantasy points. So if I tell you before that last week, Jameer Gibbs is only going to get you 5.3 points, there's no way you think you guys can win it, right? I didn't think we were. At, I was I was uh, visibly upset. Uh, I was more shaken when uh, we don't have C.D. Lamb, but I was at dinner with my family watching that Cowboys game, and when Dak threw like the 96-yard touchdown or whatever it was, and I uh, was not a happy person at that dinner table. I thought everything had been crumbling down at that point. I was uh, very pessimistic, and my wife was trying to keep me upbeat and positive and uh, just wasn't having it. And so Donovan sent me a uh, – we didn't even talk that night because we were we were both in the same boat, and we're usually lockstep on text. And he just sent me a text the next morning with some optimism, and I said, you know, let's go for it. And I got a good frame of mind, and, you know, fortune hit us. Well, let me piggyback on that is uh, that whole when we went to bed Thursday night after the Cleveland Jets game, we had Breeze and Njoku. We were we slid from third to first. So we went to bed in first place Thursday night. We were pretty, you know, nervous, but but happy and texting all day Friday and Saturday and then wanting Jameer Gibbs to step up. And then Jameer does that and CD and Dak. Does. We didn't text one time after that game started at all. I mean, the answer's in the silence, you know. I thought we were toast because we dropped to, I think, ninth. You know, and Tyreek didn't even have a big game. That's what's crazy. I mean, you know. that's Yeah, that's true for his standards. He did not. He kind of faded down the stretch a little bit for you guys. So you guys won it all, $500,000. So you guys split it. So that's $250,000 a piece, I'm assuming. So – any big plans with the money? You guys got anything exciting you're looking to do with it? Or are you just going to invest it? Or what are you going to do? I'm Keep pretty boring, man. Um, I'm going to, yeah, save it and be smart with it. No, no big okay. lavish purchases or anything. I mean, I'm not going to invest all of it. I mean, I've got, you know, we travel a lot. So I'll throw some on a trip. And then my daughter will be driving next year, if you can believe that. <laughs> Uh, um, so I'll put, you know, I got to get her a ride next year. So, I mean, I'll, I'll you know, some small things, but no, pretty boring, man. <laughs> Same for me. I'm like, we're, we're pretty practical dudes. We would think that we manage our money pretty well. We're not, uh, you know, we both have our own businesses going. So uh, just kind of putting it away, going to invest the majority of it. Might take the wife on a, on a nice affordable trip, but for the most part, it's I just view it as a godsend, a blessing. Uh, yeah. I think you said it best, Donovan. This, you know, this can help shave off five to ten years of some, you know, retirement grinding if we if we do it right. So that's the way I view it. Is the sooner I can get out of the rat race, the better. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you guys definitely gave some good advice uh, throughout this entire interview, but I got to ask you uh, before I let you both go. Is there anything you want to give advice, any type of advice you want to give people who are entering this contest, maybe for the first time? I mean, you guys played together. I kind of like this dynamic you had. I mean, is that something yeah. you might advise uh, people to do, maybe get in into a contest like this with someone? What, any thoughts there? If you're going to play with someone, you got to be like-minded, you know, because there's so many different – if you play fantasy football with 10 different people – you're going to have six or seven different philosophies, right? So you need to be with someone who – and I would say someone who actually watches the game. Some people literally just, you know, look at stats. They don't even really know their players. You know, you watch a guy play and you can tell, like, that's a football player, you know. That's the same. I mean, I, we both grew up playing the sport. I, I coach it now. Uh, Donovan's very active in his son's sports endeavors. And, you know, they're. it's just – you can't get everything out of a box score or a projection or an algorithm. You got to go with your gut. Uh, I like, I like playmakers. I like guys that are athletes. You know, if, yeah. if I have a choice between a guy that's putting up good points with comparable, you know, points that I know that somebody's more athletic and more feasible tangibly, like I'm going with the tangible guy every single time. So yeah. I guess that's the advice I'd give. And manage your free agent money. Don't spend it all on the third week. I mean, coming down the home stretch, guys are going to get injured, and you're going to be picking up second and third string running backs that maybe you've never heard of. And, and Don't tell them our secrets, Donovan. Yeah, you're going to need some money at the end of the year, man. 
That's true. I, I won a Super Bowl once with Tyler Thigpen as my starting quarterback. So sometimes you got to make moves at the end of the year. You oh. never know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of the Billy Volick. I was uh, thinking uh, Oh, yeah. I remember that. Day. Was a great run. Drew Bennett. He got me, Billy he got me there and then bombed in the <laughs> final, but he got me there. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. I appreciate you both coming on today. Really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, really a lot of fun talking with both of you. We'll have to do it again maybe before the season starts. Okay. Thanks for Absolutely. having me. Uh, Thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate everything. And RT has been class, first class the whole mm -hmm. way through. I just you guys were lockstep in communication, making sure we got the funds and got the money. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your CEO called me several times and walked me through the process and was very, you know, just very accommodating. And everybody I've talked to has been super nice. And so um, just giving a shout out to RT Sports. Mm -hmm. We've been playing on RT Sports for many, many, many years. Yeah. First time we ever went online was with RT Sports. So big shout out to you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. And mm -hmm. we look forward to many more years together. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. All Thanks, right, guys. that was that was Ross Peters and Donovan May, the winners of the fantasy championship this year. Big congratulations to them on winning it all. A lot of fun talking today. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Don't forget to get in the fantasy championship next year for a chance to be like these guys and win five hundred thousand dollars. This has been Jeff Power with Real Time Fantasy Sports. Have a great day. <laughs>